Hello everyone and welcome back to an introduction to Microsoft Excel. My name again is Sakib and today we're going to cover arithmetic and basic functions in Excel. Here's the agenda. We're going to cover something called Bode Mass. Now you wonder what Bode Mass is and it stands for brackets, order, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. This is the, the arithmetical order of operations you have to follow in order to get the answers right. Let's just go through an example of this quickly before we jump into Excel. Say you have this expression given 4 plus 3 times 8 divided by 2 plus 2 squared minus 1 plus 4 minus 4 half. Now the question here is how should we go about how should we go about solving this expression? Now remember what we want to follow is Bode mass. Again that stands for bracket, order, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. And this is the order of things we follow. So first we'll do the brackets. So that you see there are two brackets here, one given here, another one here. So let's try and see what we can do. So in the bracket operations you see what has changed is the 4 divided by 2 has been turned into a 2. So that's a good point because why didn't we do the why didn't we do this one first? Why did we do this one first? Again, that's because of Bode mass, where division comes before addition and subtraction. Therefore, we divide it first within the brackets, and then um, we will add and subtract. And remember, things outside the bracket, there's an order outside the bracket, and there is a division outside the bracket. But we must do what is inside the brackets first. In the next expression, we remove the brackets by solving the expressions inside them. So 4 plus 3 gives you 7 here, 4 minus 2 gives you a 2. And the rest of it is all unchanged. In the next one, we will do we'll take care of the order term. We finish with the bracket, now we're or the order term. Here is the order term, 2 squared, which is turned into a 4. Next, we'll take care of the 8 divided by 2 division. Here you have it, 8 divided by 2 gives you a 4. Next is multiplication, which is 7 times 4, which is a 28. And the last step, then, are the additions and the subtractions and that gives you a 33. Now, a quick word on the division multiplication. It doesn't matter if you do division first or multiplication first. Same with addition. It doesn't matter if you do addition first or subtraction first, but division multiplication must be done before addition subtraction. Brackets must be done first and orders must be done after bracket before anything else. That's not it. That's it for this presentation, but now we jump into Excel. Let's do it. So I'll walk you through this example of a, of a purchase order for Pets Palace, which is a pet store. They sell pet stuff. Let's see how Excel can help us create an invoice for Pets Palace. So the order Pet Palace has received is that they, they need to provide 10 pounds of premium dog food, three chew toys, two pounds of bird seeds, and a sweater for a small dog. So let's let's go through the spreadsheet. Over here in quantity, we can put in 10 since it's 10 pounds. And the unit price, let's say, is $10 per pound. The chew toys are $8 each. Oh, sorry. There are three chew toys at $8 each. And bird seeds, let's say, cost $5 a pound and there are two pounds ordered a, a small sweater a small dog sweater is just one but let's say it's a bit pricey at twenty dollars now if you remember from last course we can just quickly go in and change the type here to accounting and that'll pop that'll populate all the dollar signs here that makes it quite easy to see that as a dollar again up here and you go into accounting or select accounting rather. Now we want to have the total price here. So the total price here would be $100 because there is 10, 10 quantity and $10 per quantity. So we can type in directly $100. 
but that's not so much fun. We want to be able to do this automatically. Let Excel do all the heavy lifting here. So what we do here is type an equal to sign and we select this cell. See how this has popped up at D18. This is the border has changed to flashy and over here says D18 as well. Then we need to multiply that by the quantity that was bought. So we go in here and select this cell. So D18 times C18. Okay, and then we hit enter. And voila, $100. Let's do that one more time. So that's equal to here times the unit price. It, sorry, equal to equals the unit price times the quantity. And that gives us $24, which is 8 times 3. Um, but we don't want to have to type this in every time. So what we can do is one of two things. We can copy this uh, this cell using Control C or by going in here and hitting copy. We can go down here and paste it again. Now you see that it has automatically calculated five times two, even though we copied this cell over here. The value of this cell, remember, was D18, D19, sorry, times C19, and the value for this cell has become D20 times C20. This is a 20th row, D and C, quantity, unit price, and it did that automatically for us. We didn't have to type in D20, C20. The other thing you can do is you can also drag by hit, selecting the corner here and dragging it down one. And again, it has done the same thing. It has updated the formulas and calculated the correct value using these two quantities. Um, so, as you can see, you can see the formulas up here, but if you want to see them in the cell, all you have to do is double click on the cell and it shows you the formula D21 times C21. It also shows you which cells are involved. So these two cells are involved in this formula, so therefore they're highlighted. Now this is simple, but if you have a large spreadsheet with lots and lots of formulas that are very complex, this becomes invaluable in identifying which cells are actually being used to calculate the number that you see there. So there we are. Now let's do a bit more arithmetic. We want to figure out what the subtotal is. So we can come down here and hit equal to, select this cell plus this cell plus this cell plus this cell. And voila, we have $154. Let's say the tax rate is 5%. So we put in 5% here. And, let's, so, and we want to calculate what the sales tax will be. Well, the sales tax will be the subtotal times the tax rate, which is 770. The total, finally, is going to be 154 plus the sales tax, 161.70. So there we are. We used a whole bunch of formulas in Excel to do a lot of the heavy lifting and create the spreadsheet for us. So let's try and add a new thing to this and see if it all works out again. Let's say another order is a small travel cage for our small dog. Just need one of these and let's say this costs $50. Now you see what has happened here is that this 50 over here got populated automatically. This is a feature of some of the newer versions of Excel where it will take and populate formulas based on the formula in the above cell. So we didn't have this earlier and it did copy it over. If you don't believe me, I will show you that one more time. Let us undo these changes and put in one. And we can go here into this cell and check that there's nothing in it. It's a completely blank cell. We put one here, 50 here, and it's automatically populated 50. 
And it had it not done that, we could have just copied it over from the top as we did before. But now the problem is that none of these numbers down here have been updated. This 154 is still the same. If you double click it, you can see that it's using these four cells, but not this fifth cell. So we can go in and add that in. And all of the numbers have been populated automatically. Well, that's really nice and all, but we want to be able to calculate that subtotal automatically as well. Why do we need to do that one step? Well, here comes the sum function to the rescue. So let's delete whatever is in here. And try using the sum function. So to do that, we use equals sum sum. And it brings up a whole bunch of functions that you can use. But we're just going to use sum. Open bracket. Now we select the top and drag it all the way down to the bottom. And then we close the bracket. And now whenever you add anything in here, that number will automatically get populated. Let's order a medium sized travel cage. One, this one cost $75. This one got automatically populated and so did this number down here, which was 214 before or 204 before and now it's 279. And you, as you can see here, this really does help us and save us a lot of work in creating an invoice. Now all we have to do is enter in these, the descriptions. So here we are with our purchase order ready. Now I want to show you a quick thing. Say you want to figure out quickly which cells have a formula involved and which cells are pair values. One way to do that is you can just go to the cell, check up here. This is 10, just a number. 10, just a number. Over here we have a formula. But if you had a big sheet, you might need an easier way to figure that out. So let's go into formulas. The formula tab up here and say show formulas. And you can see it has painted this out, but it shows you now all the formulas that we put in here. Down here, over here, over here, and there's another one up here for the date. The today formula will just put in the today's date as it has done over here. Now that the invoice is ready, we can publish it into a PDF form or an XPS form using save and send, create PDF, create PDF, and then you can save it wherever you like. Thank you. Now another formula I want to talk about is the average formula. Say you have someone comes up to you and asks what was the average cost of each item in in your invoice. One way to do that is you select any cell in the spreadsheet, we'll just put it here for now, and equals average. And you can again, like the sum function, you can drag all the unit prices all the way down and close bracket. It gives you $28. The average price of, of all these six things is $28. And which other functions are there in Excel, you might be wondering. So we can quickly look, take a look at what other functions might there be. So these are the most recently used functions up here, count, max, sign, sum if, hyperlink. And let's take a look at all the functions. As you can see, there are a lot of functions. A lot of times you won't need to use most of these functions. Uh, the basic functions will go a long way into easing your workload. But Excel does come in packed with a lot of functionality. And in this course, in the remainder of this course, as well in the next advanced course, we'll cover a lot of these functions, but still not all of them, because a lot of them are specialized mathematical functions or statistical functions that are a bit outside the scope of these courses. Well, thank you for joining us and see you in the next module.